All right, guys, get your popcorn, your favorite beverage. In this episode, we're going to be rebuilding the transmission of this 1978 Toyota pickup truck. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to rebuild this transmission. To the best of my knowledge, this is a W52 transmission we found in uh, Toyota pickups. This is a come out of a 78. There's no telling what it originally was in, but uh, regardless, should be the same for a W50 or a W52 transmission. All right, first thing we're going to do is pull this bell housing off. And these are all going to be 17 millimeter bolts. There's going to be seven of them around here. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do while I got the transmission facing this direction is take this bearing retainer off. Got four 10 millimeter bolts. And this just slides off like this. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is I've got this transmission spun around here. Well, I'm going to take off these five bolts um, that hold on the shifter assembly. They're going to be 12 millimeter bolts. There's going to be a thick rubber gasket in here that you're going to want to reuse if your rebuild kit didn't come with one. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull off this detent spring. It's a uh, 24 millimeter socket. And what you're going to have is basically the plug, a ceiling washer, there's going to be a spring that comes out right here. And then there's also going to be, if I can get it out. The actual, uh, not even sure what you'd call it, but it's the part that mashes on the shifter and gives you your resistance. So I just stack all that in one assembly so I remember how it goes and set it to the side. There's one more identical to it that's on the back side right here. I'm not going to film that, but I'm just going to go and take it out. We're, there's a roll pin right in here that we're going to drive out on the back side. Whenever we pull this whole tail assembly off, this will slide off with it. We'll just have to remember as we reassemble to go ahead and slip this on here before we tighten all this down. All right, the next thing we're gonna take off is this whole tail housing assembly. It's gonna be eight. These are gonna be a 14 millimeter bolt. I'm just gonna to try to pull this tail housing off. It should just slip off and I'll decide to take this. Let's go ahead and get this guy out of here so I don't lose it. And then it looks like this whole tail housing should just slip off now. Right, I believe our next step is going to be to take this whole uh, outer case right here off. Snap ring right here. And then another one right here. And so that's what I'm going to take off now. I just got these um, like said, uh, lock ring pliers. These basically have a flat or a knurled end to grip the teeth. Then when you squeeze the handles, they pull apart. So I'm going to try to just stick it in there. I'm just going to grab a small flat tip screwdriver and kind of help work this off as I go around it. It's nerve wracking trying to get the oil thing off. There's actually a, a circlet behind this little cover. And you're just going to take, pry this little thing out. 
and I've already removed mine, uh, but there's two circlips in here. One on the OD of that bearing and then one on the ID of it. Now that I got those two out, uh, I've already tried it and it seems like it's gonna come apart pretty easy. Now is actually where you could probably tap on this thing to get it split apart. Take these detent springs out and it's a number six Allen, uh, Allen key. Once you take these out, there's a spring in here that you're going to want to fish out. Just like that. And then there's also going to be a detent ball in here, which looks like a steel ball bearing. And it's just down in this hole. The thing with these is they're non-magnetic because they're stainless. So to get these out, you're going to have to actually flip this thing over and catch it in your hand. I've already done that for all three of these, so... All right, the next thing we're gonna do is remove the actual shift fork from the shift, the shifter rod. There's gonna be three of them, two on this side of the plate and one on this side of the plate. And all three of those, you'll use a 3 16 punch and just drive that pin straight through there. same process for all three of them you're just driving driving this pin through the hole right there so there's one there one there and there's one on this all right the next thing we're going to do is remove this uh shifter shaft this for this shifter fork right here um, one thing uh, there's an interlock pin in between these two so if this won't freely come out check this shaft and make sure it's uh look at the detent hole and make sure it's actually centered up because if it's a little bit too far one way that interlock pin will keep this shaft from coming out so we'll just slide this shaft out all right this is the interlock pin in here i was talking about you just kind of barely see it in there what we're going to do is take a magnetic tip screwdriver and try to fish that guy out. And now we're going to pull this second shifter shaft out. And then we're going to repeat the process for the next and last shaft. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is take this speedometer drive ring gear off. It's got a snap ring on this front side right here. This gear should just slide off. There's a ball ball bearing right there. That is what this thing drives with. It's kind of like the keyway for it. So if you just turn that thing upside down, it should fall out. And this ring will slide off too. Alright, so the next thing we're going to need is a bearing cooler. Uh, I got this one off eBay, like $32 straight from China, I'm sure. You can also rent these at like O'Reilly's, uh, Napa, Advance, a place like that. The bearing that we're going to use this on is this output bearing output shaft bearing is right behind the speedometer gear we just took off and the end of the shaft has a taper in it that this taper will line up in you just want to make sure that you actually got it in there before you start cranking on it now we're going to turn this bolt, which is going to thread into here, and pull this bearing off. Uh, I'm going to try it with this little impact gun and see if it gets it. Now there's this snap ring. I'm going to go ahead and snag it off there as well. The 
next bearing we're going to pull is right here on the counter shaft. Um, there's a snap ring on the face of this bearing. You want to get it off first. Yeah. And we'll use the same same bearing puller I was just using. All right, so we're going to remove this fifth gear from the counter shaft. It just slides off. And then we're going to remove reverse from the counter shaft as well. It just slides off. All right, the next thing we're going to remove is this gear set. And to do so, there's a snap ring. You'll see I've already gotten this one started. This one's actually a bit too large for my regular snap ring pliers. It just won't open up enough. So I had to get a little bit creative and take these and slip it over like that and actually drive the end of the pliers. All right, the next thing we're going to do is this is fifth gear. We're going to pull it off, grab the synchronizer ring with it, pull it off. And then there's this ball bearing that has to come off in order to get the rest of this off. We should be able to just turn it upside down. And... There it goes. Get it out of there. And then the rest of reverse. Everything else should come off. All right, the next thing we're going to do is remove this reverse shaft. And to do that, we spin this thing around. And on the back side, there's one bolt right here that's a retainer for the shaft. And it's going to be a 12 millimeter. And then you should be able to slide this whole shaft out and catch the spacer. All right, so I've just spun the transmission back around. Now we're going to take this bearing retainer out. It's four large Phillips head screws. And I tried it with a screwdriver, and it felt like it was going to strip, so I just got one of these little Phillips head impacts. And I'm just going to give that a try. Not sure why Toyota and all their infinite wisdom decided to use Phillips head screws for this, but this bearing retainer just slips off. And there's gonna be a snap ring holding this bearing. Yeah, and grooves right here at the bottom. I'm gonna flip this. Alright, so this next, next step is going to get a little tricky. We got to keep these two shafts meshed back here on the back side, and we got to pull this plate off. So I'm just going to try to get it started right here. Alright, so we're going to roll this counter shaft, just set it out of the way for right now. Take your input shaft and separate it from the output shaft. Just like that. And slide this needle bearing off and set it to the side with it. I'm going to pull this synchronizer. Get it out of the way. And there's another snap ring right here we got to get off. Once you get that off, the rest of this 
good slide off. Careful not to lose these little clip keys. They have a clip retainer in them. Just like that. All right, the next thing we're gonna have to do is pull this bearing off of the output shaft. I, uh, I tried every configuration of my bearing puller and it's not long enough to get to the end of this shaft. So what I wound up doing was going to Lowe's and grabbing some all thread and putting on there. So I'm gonna give that a shot. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is take off this gear set and uh, shift selector synchronizer. This whole thing comes off as one assembly. So what I've did is take my bearing puller and put it behind this back gear. And I'm going to set it back up and pull, pull that off. This thing comes off there's a uh, detent ball here that's already fell out earlier on mine but it's, it goes right there you'll want to watch for that thing not to hit the floor all right so now that we got the output shaft completely disassembled I'm gonna change this input shaft bearing All right, I'm gonna go ahead and install this new input shaft bearing. Uh, for orientation, the sealed side or shielded side goes down. And I'm just gonna try to drive this on with a punch, see how it works. I've got it sitting on a piece of wood because this is a machine surface and you don't wanna damage it. Notice I keep moving around to different spots on this race. You want to make sure that your punch is only on this inner race. If it slips off and goes into this bearing channel, you might as well pull that bearing off because it ain't going to be any good. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is on this counter shaft, we're going to change both of these bearings out. And this one will just pop off like that. Make sure you get the inner race to the bearing. And this one, I think we're going to have to use the puller. install the new bearing uh, for some reason the kit that I got changes it from a ball bearing to a roller bearing I'm not sure how big of a deal that is but we're gonna put it in there anyways you always want to make sure this snap ring faces out because whenever you whenever you put it in the transmission case you're gonna to have to put a snap ring on it I'm 
this one I'm just going to use the hammer and get it started on this thing and then I'll switch to the punch. And on this you want to make sure you're only hitting this inner race if you're hammering out here or if you keep hammering until you get to the end of the shaft you're going to have problems. until everything that started out on your workbench winds up in the floor. That's how I know whenever I'm there. That snap ring groove right there has to be fully out of the bearing so you can put a snap ring around it. And then I'm going to go ahead and install the new bearing on the other side. Now that we've got all of our parts clean, it's time for reassembly. So we're going to take our output shaft and third gear question mark, whichever gear this is goes on. First, Just want to make sure that those keys don't go shooting out of there whenever you put it on. You're going to get it on enough to clear the snap ring that goes right here. And that's what I'm going to put on next. You just want to make sure that that's seated all the way around and it's not poking out anywhere. All right, the next thing we're going to do is put on possibly gears four and five. Not sure which one it is, but the orientation is going to be just like this with the smaller of the two gears facing the what would be the front of the transmission and the larger one facing the rear. And this groove on this shift selector toward closer to the front. To put this on, we're going to take off this larger gear and this synchronizer and just set it to the side. And then we're going to drop. I'm going to drop this assembly down on there. All right. Now this is a spline fit onto the shaft and it's a pretty tight fit. Uh, I had to pull it off with a bearing puller so what I'm going to do is just take a punch and a hammer and tap this around until it seats. And you'll notice I'm setting the end of this shaft on the wood part of my workbench so that it don't mar the end of that shaft up. Whenever you get closer down on here, you want to make sure that whenever you get close for the synchronizer to go on, that this is lined up with the keys in here. All right. So once you get further down on there. And see how that synchronizer is engaging the keyway now. So now I know it's good. I'm just going to drive it the rest of the way. All right, that's good and seated now. So now I can drop fifth gear on here. But before I do that detent ball right here, 
Leave this down. Then I'm going to make sure it goes back in that hole. And then that's where that ball keys in at, right there into the gear. So flip the synchronizer on, line the keys up. Flip the gear on. All right, the next thing we're going to do is install the bearing right here behind fifth gear. You want to orient this so that this snap ring groove right there is towards the rear of the transmission. It should line up with close to this one. All right, so that one's fully bottomed out. And there's a snap ring groove right here that that bearing has to clear in order to get the ring on there. All right, the next step is going to be to assemble the input shaft to the output shaft, mesh in the counter shaft, and then we're going to install it all into our plate right here. So this synchronizer, align it with the keys. And then this just slides in, but before you slide it in, you gotta throw your needle bearing in there. And this is the new one for my rebuild kit. Just slides in there like that. And we'll go ahead and throw a little assembly lube on that thing, because Now that we got that slipped together, we're just going to mesh these up like this. And then we're going to try to feed them through this plate. Well, of course it would go when I wasn't filming it, but basically what I had to do was kind of hold the plate on the edge of the table and just tap these, alternate between them. But you're using a brass hammer because the end of this shaft is what guides into your pilot pushing, and you just don't want to be beating the end of these with a steel hammer. All right, like I said, once you got that through there, we can go ahead and throw this snap ring on right here. And you can go ahead and put your bearing retainer on there. I'm going to tighten these back up using this little impact screwdriver. All right, the next thing we're going to do is to assemble the reverse idler shaft. Make sure that the oil ports 
on the gear face out and that this little tab faces in and goes on this hole right here and you want to spin that tab around line up with this little slot in here and then on the back side you're going to take that retainer put it on align the shaft with that flat spot This just slides on here. Like so. And then you put your ball bearing from earlier in that little hole. And you got the same thing. This inner piece is a piece that has the groove for the ball bearing on it so it has to line up with that and you also have to line these three keys up on the synchronizer so we'll just line the synchronizer up line that up like that and then the circlip goes against this face right here all right so i just kind of tap that thing back into shape i'm going to try my best and maybe just knock this down on here just like that and then we're going to install the reverse gear and then fifth gear and then we're going to drive this bearing on here on the end of the shaft so I'm just going to use this brass hammer and tap just the inner race to kind of get it started. And then I'm gonna switch to the punch and the regular hammer to drive it on. We just wanna drive that on so that, that circlip race comes comes to so you can see it. And then we're going to put our clip on there. Alright, so now that we got the countershaft bearing on and the snap ring, the next thing we're going to do is install the, the snap ring, the output shaft bearing, the speedometer drive, and then the last snap ring. I've already got this one on here, uh, GoPro battery died, so then we're going to take this bearing and slide it on, and I'm just going to use a punch and hammer to drive this down. And you just want to go until that bearing, uh, the inner bearing race is seated against that snap ring. You don't want to drive too hard because you can actually damage or pop that snap ring off there. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and slip this little spacer on there. And then we're going to put our detent ball in there and align the speedometer gear with uh I guess it matters and 
And then lastly, just take our last clip and put it on right there. Okay, the next step is going to be to assemble the shifter forks. And this is going to be very, this is a little bit tricky. So, start with the bottom one. It's going to be the one that's got this little spring on it. And then we're going to take. these little guys this is the interlock pin this is the thing we fished out with a magnet so we're just going to go go in there and that's basically you can imagine from shaft to shaft there's a hole between there where that goes so the next shaft we're going to put in is this one uh, this one and the next one look very similar but you can tell the second one the hole is further towards the end and the first one the hole is further in uh, so i'm going to slide it through and then we're going to go ahead and put this shifter fork on There it goes. Okay, so that's all it was. I had this facing the wrong way. But that interlock pin is flush in there now. So now I'm going to take the one with the hole further out and go ahead and slip it through. Before I go all the way with this one, I'm going to go ahead and slide this shift fork on and let it run through there. And then we're going to take our second little interlock pin and go through this top hole. Drop it down in there. You may have to wiggle this around a little bit to get it to drop in flush, but once it drops in flush, we can take our last shifter fork and go through just like that. And see, this is the detents, so neutral would be here, and whenever you go into a gear, it detents down into here. So that center center groove is where the center ball needs to be. So use that kind of as a visual to get it get it centered up in there. So the next thing we're going to do is to. drive in all three of our roll pins for these shifter forks Now we're just going to drop in all these detent balls and all three of the shifter holes or the detent holes followed by a spring in all three of them. And then our plugs. One of these plugs is shorter than the other two and the shorter one goes on the top. So the next thing we're going to do is prepare the steel case uh, to go on there. 
So I'm just gonna start, you know, make sure there's no old gasket caked up on here. And just use a razor blade since this is steel. take our gasket just line it up on here now is a good time to go ahead and check our fill plug and drain plug and just make sure that everything's good for them it's a lot easier to do it now when there's not oil in the transmission So that's just a 24 millimeter socket and I've actually got some copper washers I'm going to go ahead and put a copper washer on there before I do I'm just going to wipe the surface down then I'm going to give the fill plug the same treatment slide the case onto the transmission I've just got mine kind of tilted up right here and um, while I was installing this I actually took some scotch bright and all these pins these alignment pins just scotch bright them up real good so that they'd slide in maybe all right so now we're just going to put the last of our snap rings on we're going to have one large one. We have one large one that goes on. Uh, once you got the two outer ones, you put the two inner ones on. Then the last snap ring on the counter shaft. thing we can change over here is this um, rear seal and the way I'm going to attempt to change to take that out is to just take a long punch and you see what I'm trying to do is just use the punch to drive this thing out of here seal I'm actually going to use one of these bearings that I pulled out of the transmission to uh, press this in here because you want to hit on the outer edge of it not on the inner edge so this seal will go a good ways down in here before it bottoms out all right the next thing we're going to do is put this tail housing on here i went ahead and put my gasket on there make sure you're not forgetting something and as you go in you'll have to align this little got up with these three slots right here all right so i figured i'd show this in just a touch more detail since apparently even i managed to mess it up whenever you put this in all right this is your shift selector this is what goes to your actual shifter 
you got your three selectors that are tied to your forks right there. The bottom one has a spring-loaded detent in it. If you will go ahead and slide that into there, slide it into the middle one, okay? Slide it into the middle one and just hold it up with this hand and start feeding the tail housing onto it. Then once you get your tail housing started like that, you can go on in. Before you tighten these down, this shift selector, or uh, whatever you call this, this goes to the the bottom of your shifter bushing sits inside of that. It goes in here, just like that, the hole towards the rear. And before you put this on all the way, you need to slip this over the shaft and then slide it on. Next thing we can do is go ahead and drive this roll pin in here. Um, the next thing we can do is go ahead and um, put our detent springs in. This you got the bearing i don't know what you call that and then the spring just slide in and then the cap I'm going to link a uh, guide in the description that I that kind of helped me out with this particular transmission. It's a Toyota uh, service manual for transmissions. Uh, so I guess really the only thing left to do is just to uh, throw this bad boy in the truck, put some fluid in it, and take it out for a drive, see how we did. Hope you guys learned something. I hope this video is useful for someone looking to rebuild their transmission. And Five hours later.